Good evening. Welcome to the Family River Cowboy Church. Howdy. Howdy. Good. When I was feel angry, when he was feel do had enough, when he had a new and use any word a new responsible and you returned you get you and is in the armor of God and you and is in his can't you lift your feet up and you can you can see for a church family and is a conference and is a bonus for a listen just for a Lord of Prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the blessings. We thank you, Father, for blessing you. Let it have for, for a conversation and then we can you for everything will praise had for a conversation and then use are for weapons and then for you others for armors and only for in Christ Jesus and then for you come helping us. Lord we come to you on this for everything for an only thing for keeping us safe. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, the indestructible, the ever-living seed of the Word of God. I will never be the same. Never, never, never. I will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Come on. You said I was on in five, so... I'm glad you're here tonight. Yes. We're getting close to this end of this trail ride that we've been on, talking about the armor of God. Tonight and next Tuesday, we will be wrapped up on this. Tonight, we're going to be talking about a part of the armor of God that really doesn't get talked about when most people do studies on the armor of God. They end it where we ended last week with the sword and... Last week we talked about what did we talk about? Anybody remember? We talked about every one of them last last week. Well, we talked about well, what what was the subject of last week? The sword. The sword. The sword. And that's where most people stop. But prayer is another offensive weapon that we have in our arsenal of the armor of God. As you know, we always got to start with something funny. Tonight, I'm going to tell you a story about little, about Joe. Joe found himself in dire dire straits. He was having a lot of trouble. His business had gone bust. He was in serious financial trouble, and so he's desperate, and he decides to ask God for help. You know, that's the thing is that we're we're talking about prayer. Joe is is praying, and. He begins his prayer and he says, God, please help me. I've lost my business. And if I don't get some money pretty quick, I'm going to lose my house and my family. Please, Lord, let me win the lotto. And so the lotto comes that night and somebody else wins. And Joe again prays and says, God, please let me win the lotto. I've lost my business and my house and now my car is gone. And I'm going to lose my family too, Lord, unless I get some money real quick. Lotto comes and Joe still has no luck. Somebody else wins. 
So once again, Job finds himself on his knees. My God, why have you forsaken me? I've lost my business. I've lost my house. I've lost my car. And my wife and children are starving. And don't ask, I often ask for help, Father. And I always have been a good servant to you. Please let me win the lotto. So that I get my life back on track. And suddenly a blinding flash of light came out of the heavens. And Job was suddenly confronted by the voice of God. Amen. And God said, Job, meet me halfway. Buy a ticket. <laughs> So tonight we're going to be talking about prayer. <laughs> Remember Joe, buy a ticket. Prayer is an important part of our day-to-day -day lives. How often do we think of it in association with the armor of God? Most of the time, if we ask, nobody really thinks of it as being a part of the armor of God. Turns out it is one of the most vital parts of the armor of God. I want to tell you another story about a man named Arter. Elite Syndrome. He was a recent high school graduate from Tallinn, Estonia. And he tells this story. He said, I just recently was a high school senior trying my best to balance school, God, and the various cares of this life. When the new year started, I wanted to focus on picking the right national exams to take. And when I decided which ones I would prefer, it didn't even come to mind that one of them could fall on the Sabbath. Yeehaw. By nature being rather forgetful and slow, I didn't notice the day of the week as I was set for two of these exams and both of them fell on the Sabbath. I lived in an unsuspectingly until about three weeks before the first exam. One of my teachers casually mentioned something about my pupils triple in diameter when it hit me that it fell on the Sabbath. So I wrote a letter of request to the center explaining my affiliation with the Sabbath keeping church and then I started to wait. They tested my faith and patience for a whole month before I got a reply on the 5th of May. They also requested an affirmation from the church as proof, which Mr. Johnny Lambert, of course y'all don't know who Johnny is, do you? Composed for me. They respected my beliefs and although my request came way too late, it allowed me to sit for the exams on an additional day appointed by them. This was another blessing from God. It was an answer to numerous prayers that while I was still waiting, the reply from the sinner came at the right time. In that period, I was partly preparing to receive a negative answer, which meant failing to graduate and staying another year in school, partly really hoping that God would still provide an easier way out. I knew he could, and he did. So dear brethren, as you can see for yourselves, our gracious and all-powerful <laughs> Lord responded to our collective prayers with abundant gifts. There is nothing more powerful in this world than the prayers of God's servants, his saints. It's a kind of remarkable story. You know, when, how many of you has ever prayed for something and, and you got an answer? How many of you has ever prayed for something and you're still waiting for an answer? Yep. God's answers are always yes and not right now. That's right. Sometimes we pray for something and we're not praying in the right direction and God uses time to mold our hearts and shape our hearts because he's always got something better in mind. Amen. Yes. 
Praying always. <coughs> if you notice that the newsletter is an article about prayer and praying without ceasing. Paul said in his letters, pray without ceasing. Well, how, how is that possible? Do I need to stay on my knees 24-7, 365? No, it's that our hearts should have an attitude of prayer and always be ready to talk to God at any given moment. For a lot of years, I was a maintenance man at an apartment complex. And most of the time, when I was between the office and getting to the, the apartment that I was going to do some work, I was talking to God and usually had it figured out before I got there exactly what was wrong because I had not talked to God about it. God's armor is comprehensive. In this series, we have spent time examining it. From the ideas behind it, to its purpose, and to its application. In the, it is absolutely essential part of surviving and winning the battle against the enemy. We have an enemy that wants to take us out. An enemy that want, would, would love to take your life if he could. If you look at the story of Job, God said do anything to him, but you cannot take his life. And I'm sure there were times when Job wished he was dead. However, right on the heels of his description of the armor, Paul adds that we should be praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, Ephesians 6.18. Is there any significance to this admonition appearing immediately after the listing of the armor? You bet there is. Because it's a vital piece of the armor. Barnes notes and commentary comments, it says, no matter how complete the armor, no matter how skilled we are in the science of war, no matter how courageous we may be, we may be certain that without prayer, we shall be defeated. God alone can give the victory. And when the Christian soldier goes forth armed completely for the spiritual conflict, if he looks to God by prayer, he may be sure of a triumph. This is the Heritage Edition, volume 12, page 133, if you're interested in looking it up. I heard a story today. Jennifer shared with me, and I'm, the ladies last night know about this, <laughs> and it's very troubling to me. It was a pastor's message to his church, and the message was, women, women need to look more like Miss Trump in a presentation to their husband. Of course, he's been put on leave and has to go to counseling in regard to this. But I bring this up for this purpose. Is that we need to pray for our spiritual leaders, our pastors, our church leaders. They, they very much need your prayers. I covet your prayers. Because it's, the enemy is going to try to take you out, but he's going to try to take your spiritual leaders out too. Napoleon was a, was a great warrior and he knew that if he could take out the, the generals and the, and the leaders of the army who were usually had very decorative array when they went out onto the battlefield and he would take them out and the companies would go crazy because they wouldn't know what to do and they were easily defeated. This is what happens when the enemy comes into a church and, and wrecks havoc is because he will take the leaders and scatter the flock. Yeah. So uh, my point is we're talking about prayer is that we need to lift up pastors across this country. We need to lift up leaders of churches across this country. We need to lift up each person in the church because God has got a plan for each one of us. Yeah. And the devil knows that we are victorious when we stand together in prayer. Amen. If we equip ourselves with God's armor, we must also be determined to keep a steady line of connection with Him. It doesn't do me any good 
if I had a vacuum cleaner up here to just run it around up here unless I plug it into an electrical outlet which gives me a source of power. You don't stand a chance unless you're plugged into the source to make it in this world. Amen. That doesn't matter how much Bible you know. It doesn't matter how much experience you've had out in this world. Unless you're plugged into the source, you're susceptible to being attacked and, and knocked down. Yes. Amen. Every person in this room needs to be prayed for and with. And needs to be praying for the person sitting next to you. Amen. So how can we uh, be prayed always? Luke chapter 18 verses 1 through 8 said, it tells, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. God is our vengeance. And we're going to talk about that a little bit next week. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, he will he really find faith on the earth. There was a couple of occasions where Jesus marveled at a person's faith. How do you all remember the story of the, the Roman centurion that came to him? He said, okay, he said I, I, I got a servant that's sick and I want you to heal him. Jesus said, okay, I'm coming to your house. And he said, wait a minute. I'm not worthy that you should come to my house. And even come under my roof. All you have to do is speak the word and my servant will be healed. And Jesus marveled, it says in Scripture, because he said, I have not found such great faith, no, not in Israel. If we would have that type of faith, this room would be filled. If we would have that type of faith, there would be we would be making a difference in this community. We would be making a difference in the lives of the people around us. Amen. You would just walk into a room and God walks in with you. Yes. And affects people. Luke wrote that Jesus gave the above parable to teach that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. There's times when you pray for something and you just think, my God, when are you going to answer my prayer? Anybody ever been there? Yeah. You know, we all get there if we're honest. But the thing is, is that we don't lose heart and we keep sight of what we're praying for. I talked to somebody today and I said the first thing is that we need to do is we need to ask one time and then when we pray about it the next time we need to pray thanking God as if it's already happened. Thank, Thank you God that this room is full. Thank you God that people are coming to the Lord. Sunday we're going to put I'm going to put another list out there we're going for the baptisms. Amen. Start getting ready. I'm so happy. Is that good? Yes, amen. Yes. In her, in her quest for justice, a widow never gave up seeking help from the unjust judge. Y'all remember the story of the parable? Mm -hmm. In her quest for victory, we must never give up seeking help from our perfect God. Amen. The command to pray always is not to say that we must be in a continuous, unceasing dialogue with God every second of every day, but rather that we must develop a connection with Him. We've got to be plugged in in order for that vacuum cleaner to run. My life is not going to run right if, I, if I'm not plugged in to my Jesus, to my God, God my Father, and to my Holy Spirit. Amen. That's right. Yeah. Got to flip the light switch on for the light to come on. Yes. In the, in the maintained through regular prayer, Bible study, and godly lifestyle that always allows us to instantly come before God in prayer in times of distress and need. We should always have a connection with God even during the good times. We, there's a lot of people that I've known over the years and counseled with and, and the thing is, is that God has always been a 911 call to them. I've got it over here but when I get in trouble I expect you to take care of it. I want him to take care of it during the good times. Yes. That's, right. That's the times when I really relish the relationship that I have with Him. Amen. Because I know it's even sweeter when I get into tough times. Amen. So what is supplication? Have you ever? How many of you ever wondered what that meant? That scripture, prayer and supplication. Well, that's you know basically praying two different times, right? We're gonna let's look at what supplication is. Philippians four six says, "Be anxious for nothing." How many of you have ever been anxious? Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. God already knows what your request is. He wants you to know that He knows 
that you need to know. Right. The Greek word translated supplication in Ephesians 4 or in 6.18 is and Philippians 4 6 is transliterated desis and by a strong concordance means a petition or special request to God. How many of you ever just prayed it in general? You know, hey, hey God, morning. It's good to see you again. I'm glad you got the, the sun and shine. Today was a beautiful day, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Beautiful sunshine day. I, I almost got to 70 degrees at the house. Beautiful day. And we get to talk to God about that kind of thing. But our prayer and our supplication is, God, I've got a need. I've got a brother who has cancer. And I want you to heal him. I'm asking you to heal him. That is a supplication prayer. Does that make sense? Yes. What role does the Holy Spirit play in Christian's prayers? The Holy Spirit should be a guide to you. Slow down. You're going to hear me say this a lot. Slow down and listen to the Holy Spirit. He's never going to steer you wrong. Amen. Anybody ever been on a trip you took the wrong turn? What does what the GPS say? Redirect, redirect, redirect. Make a U-turn at the nearest possible. The role of the Holy Spirit should be always involved in every prayer that we make. He's part of the Godhead. He's in, he lives inside of each one of us. Romans 8, 26 and 27 says this. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weakness. That's right. For we do not know how we should pray as we ought, but the Spirit itself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows the mind of the Spirit is because it makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Right. So in essence, you're plugged in and the Holy Spirit is the, is the mechanism. It, it's the, you know, you got a vacuum and it, it's just a casing, but in the bottom of there is a motor that, may, that it spins at a certain RPM and it pulls stuff in as you're vacuuming across the floor. You're the casing. The Holy Spirit is that motor. That's right. And it's always plugged in to God. The Father and knows his heart because God has a good heart and thinks good thoughts about each one of us. Jeremiah 29 11. Since we don't know how to pray as we should, sometimes sometimes we know how to pray, right? Have you ever been in a situation where I just don't know how to pray about this? That's right. Sometimes we get there. You know, sometimes the only thing that could come out of my mouth at times has been Jesus. Mm, yep. And just when I say that, you feel the peace that surpasses all understanding just flood my body. Since we don't always know how we should pray as we should, if the Spirit is in us, I don't like that word if. If you're a child of God, you're either a child of God or you're not. That's right. And if you are a child of God, the Holy Spirit lives inside you. So since He lives inside of you as a child of God, Acts 2.38 and Romans 8.14, Paul says the Spirit will make intercession for us. So when you don't know what to pray, the Holy Spirit's inside you says, I know what, I know how to pray here. Amen. This means that although we do not always know exactly what we are praying for, God knows our hearts because He's living inside of us. Yes. John 17, 23. So no matter how clumsily Christians present their requests, and no matter how jumbled and confused they are, God will always know how they are, what we are trying to say and how we are trying to approach His throne. Yes. Through His Spirit working in us, He is a, has intimate knowledge of our hearts and our minds. He understands us better than we understand ourselves. Yes. You ever prayed for something and God gave it to you and you're like, that's not what I needed. <laughs> had, a, had a good friend of mine years ago. He prayed, he prayed. He wanted to move from Palestine. He wanted to move over to Longview. And he put in for a transfer. He worked for the railroad. 
put in for a transfer and he prayed and prayed and prayed about it and it finally went through and he got over there and he's like it's not where I belong I should have stayed where I was at everybody's familiar with Romans 8 28 for God causes some things to work together for good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose right no, all things all things what does the word all mean Everything. Everything. God causes all things to work together for good to them that love God and are called according to His purpose. How many of you are called according to His purpose? Raise your hand if you're a child of God. Amen. Who or what should we be praying about? Matthew 6, 9 through 13 says, In this manner we ought to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one, for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. And what has become known as the Lord's Prayer, Jesus Christ lays out the framework of praying to God. It is not a strict and inflexible format. God just wants to hear your heart. You don't have to get up there and quote scripture. Well, God, you said in your word. Well, God knows his word. God wants to hear your heart. God wants you to be personal with him. Sometimes just quoting scripture kind of gets impersonal, doesn't it? That's right. God wants to know your heart. God, want, God wants you to see your heart as he sees it. <laughs> Matthew 7, 7 and 8 says, Ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. How many of you has asked? I've asked. Everyone who asks receives. And he who seeks finds. And he who knocks it will be opened. So keep knocking. Luke 21, 36 says, Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all the things that shall come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. Along with praying for others, it is vital that we pray for ourselves. How many of you pray for yourself? I, I do every day. Yeah. God, I need, I, I need your help. I need you to show me, guide me, direct me. Help me say the right thing. Help me do the right thing. Sometimes I get, I stray out there and make spur of the moment. I shouldn't have said that. But we need to pray for ourselves. Our lives are filled with reminders that we can't make it on our own. I can't do this life on my own. Oh no, no. No way. I cannot be the man I need to be without God in my life. I've learned that over the years. I cannot be the husband Jennifer needs without God in my life. I cannot be the father that my kids need, the grandfather that my grandkids need without God in my life. I can't be the pastor you need without God in my life. And you can say you should be able to say the same thing about yourselves. So you got to pray for yourself. God help me. Mm -hmm. God help me he always will it's always there our God stands ready to provide us with strength and wisdom and courage we need to stand against the enemy he wants us first to come before him and ask for it God wants, you know God knows that we have a need and he could just dump it in our lap at any given time right but he wants you to ask for it because it creates a sense of intimacy with him right he wants to have an intimate relationship with you. He wants you to know how much He loves you, and He wants you, your love for Him, to grow day by day. My love for Him is not the same as it was when I gave my heart to Him at the age of nine. That's a long time ago. Matthew 26, 39 says, He went a little further and fell on His face and prayed saying, Oh my Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass for me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. 
When Jesus prayed fervently before His crucifixion, He knew what He wanted to happen. He knew there was no other way out. I don't think He prayed that specifically for God to take Him out of that. I knew. I know He know, knew. I know He knew He was going to the cross. But I think He did that as an example for us that when we find ourselves in strenuous situations, that not all the time God is always going to open the door and... and take you around it. Right, right. If God doesn't take you around something, God will walk with you through it. Yes. Ephesians 6, 18 and through 20 says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit for all the saints and for me, that the others may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. For which I am an ambassador in chains that I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Paul talking about I need to pray for boldness. And, you, and I read scripture and I read the book of Acts and I see how bold he was. And he was continually praying for boldness. Isn't God good Amen. in the way he operates? Yes, Lord. Isn't God good in always showing up and answering our prayer? I'm going to pray for boldness and there it is. You can, you can read it in the book of Acts how bold he was. You know, he went up, he came back into Jerusalem, got all up in the in the disciples' face, said, This y'all, y'all are trying to make all these these Greeks and, and Gentiles go to the circumcision. God has done away with that system. The ministers of God's church, whom falls the bulk of his work, are just human as the rest of us. It goes back to what I was talking about a little bit ago, praying for our pastors and our leadership. They too are subject to exhaustion, sickness, heartache, and they too can and at times will fall short of God's mark. I'm thankful that God called me into the ministry. I have, over the years, have ministered to lots of people. And there's people that, that have come to me after years and, and said, man, you're such a blessing to me. Even, even people that I've looked up to in the ministry have said, you, you've taught me some things. As is the case, we should be sure to keep God's servants in our prayers. And not only His ministers, but all His people. We are in this battle together. We are in this battle together. Don't feel like you are in this alone. Don't feel like you have to be the Lone Ranger Christian. Even the Lone Ranger had Tonto. Amen. That's right. And we got this chemo <laughs> Prayer is one of the most effective ways that we can support each other, care for each other, and fulfill the God-inspired command God has given us in Philippians 2.4. I'm excited about what, what I see coming. You know, Vic, Vicky called me today. She said, I'm gonna go check out, I'm gonna go check out that um, storage unit and kind of get some ideas of what we might do. She called me back a little bit later and <laughs> put goosebumps on me when she told me the story about how this lady came in, Cowboy Corral. That's right. Said, I'm moving up here from Arkansas and said, I've got two of everything and I need to get I hate garage sales. And so we already got our first donation happening today. I'm excited about this ministry, how we're going to be able to minister to people and share Jesus with others. Yes. That's right. Amen. I want to ask you a question. I don't want any, I don't want you to lift your hands. I just want you to think about this. How often do you pray? Throughout the Bible, we have re there are repeated examples of people who prayed. Daniel. Daniel comes to mind when I think about prayer. How, how he would pray in the morning, he'd pray in the middle of the day, and he prayed at the end of the day. If, you, if you're going to pray, we're going to put you in the, in the lines then. Go ahead. I'm going to keep praying. They may come in these doors one of these days with an armed military force and, and say, Renounce Jesus. Or die. Let me die. You just punched my ticket home. Spend time with God. 
thank Him when you wake up in the morning because it's Him that wakes you, not the alarm clock. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's it. I'm gonna close right here. And I want to share something with you. <coughs> it's uh, it's called "I Am a Child of the King." Because of who Jesus Christ is and because He is my Savior and Lord, I am the child of the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Seated with Christ in the heavenly realm, I am chosen, accepted, and included. A citizen of heaven and a member of God's household. I am loved by God unconditionally and without reservation. I belong to Him, having been bought by Him with His precious blood, I have eternal life and will be saved from all of God's wrath to come, guaranteed. I am a Christian. I am not I am not just different in what I do. My identity has changed. I who I am has changed. Everything has become brand new. I am a dwelling place in which God Himself lives with His Holy Spirit. I have access to Him anytime, anywhere, and for any reason. I am God's creation, His workmanship. I was created by Him and for Him. So who am I and what I do matters. I am spiritually alive. I have been set free from fear and death and have been given life to live and enjoy to the fullest. I am forgiven completely, totally, and absolutely. I have been rescued from the dominion of darkness and brought into the kingdom of light, the kingdom of His Son. I have been set free from the penalty of sin and the power of sin. I am an enemy of Satan and at war with the spiritual forces of evil. But greater is He that is in me than, in he, than he that is in the world. If God is for me, it doesn't matter who or what stands against me, not Hurt, not pain, loss, problem, brokenness, not persecution, trouble, difficulty, or danger. Not abandonment, abuse, addictions, appetites, not desires, food, sexuality, relationships, not life or death, angels or demons, not past, present, or future, no power, no person, no place, not anything in all of creation. Not even Satan himself shall prevail. I am in the hands of Jesus, in the hands of God, and nothing and no one can snatch me out of God's hands. I will, I will fear no evil because God is with me. He has promised to never leave me nor forsake me. His presence is with me everywhere I go, to the heights of the heaven and to the valleys of the shadow and to the ends of the earth forever and always. I am a child of the King and choose this day to live as one. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for the power of your word, and we're thankful for the power of prayer. And Father, I, I pray right now for every person in this room. I pray, Father, that if, if there's a need, I pray today it's met. I pray if it's a financial need, I pray it's met and met abundantly. I pray, Father, if it's a marriage need, I pray that it is met and it's met and your love shows up. Father, I pray uh, if it's a health need, I pray that there be healing. Whatever the need may be, I, Father, you know, and I know your hand will grant. Father, I pray same, the same prayer for every person watching on Facebook, whether it's live or whether it's a re, rerun. We, we are in syndication. And Father, I thank you for the technology. I thank you for the ability to go outside these four walls. We love you. We need you. We stand in need of your touch. And I pray right now that you bless each person listening to the sound of my voice. As in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May the Lord bless and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he be gracious to you. May his countenance shine upon you and he give you peace. You guys receive that word tonight. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mike.